I'm Rob Droste. I am your canon for congregational development and mission. So I'm the church growth guy around here. And I just want to ask you a, a quick question. Would you like your church to grow? Now you see, that was anemic. So would you like your church to grow? Thank you. I'm going to tell you a little, just one couple things about uh, how to do that and how we go about that in this diocese. Um, do I have a, ah, next slide, please. If John Mitchell has left. Uh, I'm going to put the engine of growth in gear. And what we work with is a basic assumption around growth. And that is this, that churches grow when people in them are growing spiritually. In other words, the engine that fires everything, the fuel that you get for growing your church and growing your people is a, an experience they have of change from encountering the risen Lord. This is the basic core and the heart of Christian faith. As we encounter him, we change. As we change, we're given energy to do things that we couldn't do before. This is very good news because it, as we think about the things we heard today, everything from uh, Ukraine to the, the terrible history we have around racial oppression and slavery, the, the way we deal with those things in spiritually healthy ways is to put our trust in him. And our relationship with him fires us up, gives us empathy. It makes us care more than we would and gives us the energy we need to do something. So I think that's really important as we want to grow, we now know that people want to come to churches where they will engage real things, real spirituality and real truth. And we have that in our tradition. So I want to give you some, a few things about how we engage that now. And uh, I'm going to go through a very short and, and uh, tight list of what we do to help you grow. And then I'm going to tell you about something coming up. Next slide, please. Renewal Works. Uh, we, Renewal Works is a program that was developed in, by Forward Movement. Uh, it's an excellent uh, um, program and approach to growing your church. And we've, we have the following churches have done Renewal Works in our uh, diocese. Uh, All Saints Lakewood, Christ Church Middletown, Christ Church Toms River, uh, Resurrection Vineland Bridgeton, who's done it twice. Uh, Collingswood, Holy Trinity, Holy Trinity South River, done it twice. St. Luke's Gladstone, St. George's Rumson, St. Peter's Freehold, St. Peter's Medford, and Trinity Moorestown. And they've all done that work. Uh, it is a, it challenges parishes to reflect on their spiritual growth and to identify ways that God is calling them to grow. It's good stuff and I can connect you with them. And we do subsidize the cost for that. That's part of the budget that I have. So if you're interested in doing that, let me know. Next slide. Our coaching network. A lot of you have heard about the coaching network. So far, we have trained more than 50 discipleship growth coaches here in the Diocese of New Jersey. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, good. Good for you. Get us started. Uh, there's a class now of 16 uh, that are about to graduate and get their certifications. They worked really hard. It's a very demanding program of certification. Uh, we, we, at first time we put it together, um, we had so many people sign up that we made it harder to try to get some of them to quit. And they wouldn't quit, more joined. And so we learned that people want things of substance and they want that. And so it's a very powerful leadership tool to use in your congregation and in your own ministry, whether you're lay or ordained. And it is based on solid coaching principles plus spiritual, our spiritual principles that we have of our faith. Next slide. Uh, vestry, vestry retreats and more. I do lots of vestry retreats in the last few weeks. I've been in Choose Landing. I've been in Little Silver. Um, gosh, I've been, I've been all over the place uh, since the beginning. What? Oh, well, that's true. And, oh, yes, the cathedral. And, uh, and I, love to come, I love to come to your church. And I, what I do is I'll come and I'll preach. So uh, for the priests, the deacons, I'll take that for you that day. And, uh, and then I can run a two to three hour uh, retreat, mini retreat for your vestry and your leadership. And we talk about purpose, we talk about core strength, and we talk about practices. 
And uh, these are being very well received right now. And we put these things in place for you, I follow up with you, and we do this work to help you change and grow. Remember, we're trying to get that engine going and in gear. People have these experiences that fire them up to take action. Next slide. Some of you, and the next slide after that. The, uh, the Way of St. Paul has been around. This will be our, our uh, fourth version of the Way of St. Paul. It is, that's, that tagline up there is aspirational. Uh, we're really hoping that it will become the way that the Episcopal Church does small groups. Uh, it's designed to be Anglican in flavor and in material, and uh, it is designed to do a couple of things that will help your congregation get stronger. What we do is if you come and be part of Way of St. Paul, you will become part of a small group, and that small group is designed to help you see Jesus at work in the world around you and particularly in the people around you, and then, and then figure out how you can help him do that. Because if we understand the missional church, the missional church says that God is already out there doing things. God is already out there doing these amazing things in the world. And if God is doing those amazing things in the world, God created a church to help. That's missional church. Way of St. Paul does that on the personal level, so you can see God at work in other people. And once you start seeing God at work in other people, starting with your congregation, it expands because naturally you see it in others and you start seeing it outside and we start getting interested in helping Jesus work with and love and liberate people who aren't with us. When we help him do that, that becomes very appealing and becomes good for us. This is how we get the engine in gear. So the way of St. Paul. So next slide. On March 11th, exactly one week from today, we will be at St. David's Cranberry and we will have a come and see event for the way of St. Paul 4, season four. And um, it will be, um, you will experience, in fact, let's jump, I just settled those things. Let's jump to the next one. There it is. Um, you'll experience a small group for yourself. And uh, so what we'll do is we'll have a little bit of introductory material. We will, uh, and then you'll, we will break up into small groups and you will, have, you will have a real small group experience yourself. And you'll see how this has been designed by New Jersey for New Jersey and hopefully for the larger church. But yeah, we've got to start it here. We want to start it here and show people how it's done. So uh, we'll do that. Um, we'll see how you can, uh, you'll see how the group can strengthen your congregation's core and your ability to grow. And then in the afternoon, we will have what we call five-point discipleship, where we will spend time walking stations for prayer, for caring for the poor and outcast, um, teaching, teaching truth to people, uh, confronting injustice, and inviting to commitment. All of those. And you'll learn how to help each other to live and love like Jesus in those five areas. So it's gonna be a wonderful day. We have about 60 people signed up for it already. We can take a lot more there in, uh, in Cranberry. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Then we, uh, so this is the basic structure. Like I just said, we'll, we'll gather around 9.30. Uh, we'll start 10 a.m. sharp. We, all uh, congregational development activities we do start on time. And so uh, we start on time to, yeah, because it's important. And so uh, we'll do the morning. We will have lunch available. You will get it. It is actually, yes, a free lunch. And, uh, and then we will figure, we'll work on helping each other live and love like Jesus. At five o'clock, we will have our first time that we're going to do the forge experience. The forge is a... Uh, it's a new service that we've done for the diocese, and it is designed to uh, inspire and encourage discipleship in our tradition. So we've got a wonderful young preacher that's going to be there. Kara Slade's involved in this. Amy Cornell's involved in this. Uh, lots of folks are helping put it together. We've got wonderful music that we're going to have, and it will be available on, uh, on Zoom as well as in person. But it's all about being encouraged uh, to do this work of getting, getting that engine going and, and having the experience of Jesus that changes who we are. I want to 
to end with this. Um, I get a chance to see a lot of people doing a lot of great work. There's a ton of growth in strength and power and spirit in this diocese. In fact, if I asked you to stand up, if you see people growing in your congregation, you would all stand up. If you know how to look and you're just looking, you'll see it. They're all growing. People are growing. And uh, Bishop Stokes has always said, you go where the energy is. Yeah. So I just want to say that I'm going to name some people that if you are interested in growing your church, these are good people to talk to. And uh, they, are, they are in situations where their churches are growing really strong. And so just think about that. Uh, Greg Bazilla in South River is a great person to talk to. I know Francisco Pozo has uh, retired, but Francisco, the guy knows how to grow a church. Okay, if you ever went to Cristo Rey, you would know this. Uh, Ramon Ubiera, uh, we're seeing the, the rapid growth among our Hispanic congregations and the Hispanic Anglo congregations that are working together, rapid growth. Ramon can talk to you about that. Uh, Todd Foster in Glassboro, doing a marvelous job down there. Um, William Dishabandi at St. Augustine's in Asbury Park. Uh, you get that enthusiasm for him, for the gospel. Uh, Ellen Rutherford, uh, Resurrection Bridgeton, Mantel Bradley, St. Peter's, Clarksboro. Mantel, she, she ran up to me earlier and said, we've gone from 29 on a Sunday to 65. Yeah. You, you didn't know you were going to end up getting named, but thank you for the work. And if you talk to Mantel, you'll see why. She's deeply convicted about the power of what we do. And the, and the importance of Jesus. She's got that. All of these congregations have it. Um, Amy Cornell doing the work in Cranberry. I think they added 18 families the last year you know, to their congregation. And then uh, my favorite newcomers, uh, Chip and Lisa Graves, uh, you know, who are just doing marvelous stuff down in Waretown and Tuckerton uh, to see that. These are people that if you, you want to know how to grow in Jersey near you, talk to them. So one, one last point, a personal privilege, I'm sorry, one minute, I just want to say, one year ago today, I sat in your office, and you said, Rob, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to grow, I want to make disciples who make disciples. And he said, I do too. And 45 minutes later, he offered me the job. Amen. Bishop, thank you. you changed my life for good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you thank for you. blessing us. Bless. Thank you, Rob.